you're more comfortable over there. Okay. Not being up at the podium, it can be it can be daunting. So if you want to stay over there, yeah, why don't you? That's fine. Good morning. Good morning. Um, what is it you'd like me to know? Um. And you know what? I was we have all day. Yeah. Just so you know, and literally we have all day. I have nothing else on my calendar. You take your time. If you want to take a break, we'll adjourn and come back. All right. Yep. All right. Okay. Um. The actions of this man have caused so much pain and suffering to so many children and families, including my daughter, Isabel, my boys, my husband, me, and my fam our families and friends. Isabel's favorite place in the world was home, and he ruined that for her, for her brothers, for us, her parents. We could never see that place as home again. He took Isabel's childhood away from him, from her, along with my boy's childhood. His actions caused so many events of anguish, heart rate, heartache, accusations, scornfulness towards my family that we had to endure. His actions took Isabel from her brothers. He took away a beautiful life presence. He, we will never get to see her grow into a beautiful woman to watch her grow up, graduate high school, go to college, get married, and all the things we will never get to do with her. Christopher took her and killed her. In my opinion, Christopher has no remorse, no feelings for his actions. He has hurt countless children and families, including Isabel, Mariba, and my boys, my family. His punishment should be natural life and no parole. The problem is he will do everything to cheat the system through appeals to get away with all his crimes and maybe one day he will succeed. My soul is knowing in the Bible in the Bible there is a verse in Matthew. If anyone abuses or hurts one of these little children, these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for him to have a heavy boulder tied around his neck and be hurled into the deepest sea than to face the punishment he deserves. The Bible speaks of God's wrath, and it has been shown to be great. He has hurt many, many little ones, including my baby girl, Isabel. Punishment in this world will never be enough for the amount of pain and suffering he has caused. God, karma, Mother Earth, whatever you believe in, all of this has a way of making things right that no one can escape. Christopher Clemens should get natural life to have time to process God's wrath that is inescapable. Thank you, Ms. Phelps. She'd be proud of you. Mr. Sellers, good morning. Good morning. Ready to go? If you need a break, we can do the same thing. The same offer I made to your, to your wife. Your Honor, when the prosecution brought to us the death penalty that was on the table initially in this case, they asked us how we felt about that. We both didn't, we both felt that it, we didn't have the say of who lives or dies. Clearly, there are others that feel above that. The death penalty was off the table. We, my son Julian, said to me, Becky, and myself, we all are going to serve a life sentence of this unescapable, never-ending nightmare. Myself, until the day I die, I will feel responsible for not doing my job and protecting my little girl from the evil that lurked outside her window. Please hear my wife's words. Let justice prevail, Judge. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Jones. you proud of you as well. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Miller, State's position. Thank you, Judge. 
Before I start with that, Judge um, Julian and Sergio Miguel, the brothers, are not able to be here today. As part of this case, back in the very early days, Julian Sellis wrote a letter to his little sister, and they've asked that I share that with you to give you some perspective on what this 10-year-old boy was experiencing at the time that his sister was abducted. Dear Isabel, I love Can you. Can I interrupt a moment? Yes. I have a copy up for you. Oh, did you get the copy of Julian? No, but go ahead and read it, but it's a tough read, Miss Miller. And if you want to bail out. Judge, I think yeah. for Julian and the family, I will get through this if your honor's okay with Absolutely. reading it. Dear Isabel, I love you with all my heart. I really miss you, and I want you to come home to us. I'm really sorry for being mean to you. I want you to come home so that I can treat you with more respect and more kindness. I wish that this never happened. I miss you being kind to me. I now know that when you were very nice to me, but I was mean to you, that that was not fair. I wish I could tell you how sorry I am to you. I love that you loved me very much. I'm very sorry that I acted like I didn't even love you. I wish that this never happened to you because now that you left, I've been wanting to go look for you when I found out that you were kidnapped. I cried so much. I am very sorry that this happened to you. I'm hoping that we find you soon because I miss you very much. I wish that you were home right now. Whoever took you, have mercy on him or her. I hope you come home safe. By the time you come home, I will cry very much. I will be very happy. I will cry so much because you come home. I will hug you, make sure that nobody comes and takes you again. This person that took you hopefully gets in big trouble. I love you with all my heart. Does the state is asking for a term of natural life consecutive to the natural life sentence this court imposed on Maribel Gonzalez's murder. You have this defendant's criminal history, which is detailed in the pre-sentence report. I will say, and I know that probation is busier than I've ever seen them judge. I know the PSR notes that they were not able to get a hold of the advocates or reach the Sellis family. For the record, and your honor knows, they are here all the time. They've sat through two trials. Um, they address the court today. Yeah. So um, just for purposes of the record, I want to make sure that that portion of the PSR is, is corrected or reflected. You have had a chance to see this defendant's criminal history, not just here, um, but the many priors that he has for burglaries in Maricopa <coughs> County. You had additional letters that family and friends submitted to your honor to consider and review. What is most prominent in aggravation is the emotional harm that the Salas family endured in this case. April 21st is coming up in just a couple of weeks. I saw something this morning where the sentencing meant closure for this particular case. And perhaps for the community who's watched for the last decade, the abduction, the five years that it took before Isabel was found, and the sentencing here today may bring some closure. It is never going to be closure for this family. And you heard Sergio and Becky address you today, her brothers, who've also been here. What was ripped from them, what was stolen from them on the morning of April 21st can never be replaced. Whatever sentence you impose for this defendant will never replace Isabel to her family and friends. I don't believe there's any mitigation this defendant can proffer that would outweigh the aggravation, his criminal history, 
and certainly the emotional impact to the Sellis family. But the record in this case, Judge, does reflect something else about Christopher Clements' state of mind and who he is. When we did the suppression motion for his statements and the state asked her to introduce his statements, those weren't things that the state introduced at the time of trial. Those statements we elected not to introduce. But in those statements, what we know is that in February, he asked the FBI to come see him in the Pima County Jail. Contained within those statements that are part of the record in this case is him talking with the FBI and leading them to believe in 2017 that Isabel could still be alive. He wouldn't tell them initially whether she was alive or dead. And then the FBI comes back a second time and he outright says that she's alive. All this at a time when he is trying to get something. Burglary charges dismissed. A car back. Additional charges in Maricopa County dismissed or dropped. That's when he chose, after five years of suffering for the Salas family and friends, he chose to come forward at a time when it was all about him. And then he led the police to believe that she could still be alive in an attempt to speed up the process for him. Not only did his conduct in this case deprive the Salas family of their daughter forever, his actions are unconscionable and horrific. The court might remember that in the first trial, Becky Salas took the stand and one of the things that she talked about was how every year in those five years that they didn't know where Issa was, they bought birthday presents and Christmas presents. They stayed in that family home and they waited for her with the hopes that she would be alive. The one man who knew that she was dead the morning after he took her waited until there was an opportune time for him. That in and of itself, Judge, his conduct, his behavior reflects absolutely no remorse, completely unconscionable. It's difficult to imagine what the Salas family does after today in leaving this courtroom, but I imagine it looks very much like the life that they've been living since April 21st of 2012. All of the things that they will never get to experience with their daughter, but have every right to. The unimaginable nightmare is something that they'll never wake up from. The person responsible for all of that is Christopher Clements. And we're asking, Your Honor, that he spend the rest of his natural life in prison for Isabel's abduction and murder. We're asking that you impose maximum sentences for both the kidnapping and burglary counts, and that you run that count, the natural life sentence, consecutive to Maribel Gonzalez, which is also consecutive to the 20 years he's serving in Maricopa County. Ms. Miller, I appreciate your thoughts. I do have a question. You're asking for maximum on count two and count three. I don't remember that we had an aggravating phase in trial. Am I not limited to the presumptive? You are, Judge, and I apologize for that. It also is going to run concurrent to the natural life sentence. Okay, and I know why is he up there picking this, but... No, you're absolutely right, and for purposes of the record... I think we all know how important that absolute compliance with applicable statutes is warranted. So I just want to make sure I wasn't missing something. You're not missing anything, Judge. That's my mistake in circling the pre-sentence report on those numbers. But you're right, it has to be the presumptive sentence. 
Yes, and concurrent to the natural life. That's why lawyers are called counselors. I look to you <laughs> for guidance as you were throughout these trials. I look to all of you for guidance many times. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Eric, are you going to do the? Okay, before I hear from you, um, ladies and gentlemen, and Mr. and Mrs. Ellis and uh, the family and support, um, Mr. Uh, Kessler, I believe, is going to uh, address the court. Uh, he's going, uh, I, I've, I've gotten to know, well, uh, all, all four of the lawyers pretty well, as you can imagine. And um, I never had the opportunity to work with Mr. Kessler before this case, and um, I, I'm, I'm glad I got to know him. Uh, he's an honorable. He does a hard job, he does it well, and he does it again with honor. So, but he's got a job to do, and his job is to advocate for Mr. Clements. And in doing so, uh, he may say some things that are tough to hear. He may say some things that will anger you. You may start thinking, I hate that guy. Well, he's a terrible man, and that's completely unfair. Because he's not, he's a very good man. But that doesn't mean you won't have those emotions. So, I'm going to make an offer. If you'd like, you can step outside and um, I'll hear from Mr. Kessler. And then, as soon as he's done, I'll have my bailiff go get you and you can be present for the balance of the sentence. The choice is yours. And if you want to stay now, but if it gets a little rough and you want to leave, you won't disturb anything, you won't disturb me or the process. Feel free to get up and leave. And again, my bailiff will come out and get you. The choice is yours. Mr. Kessler. Thank you. May I use the podium? Absolutely. Thank you, Your Honor, and, and thank you for those comments. I, I really appreciate that. Um, it, it's been a pleasure trying both of these cases in your courtroom. Um, I, I don't have a lot to say. I, I, I have some observations, and, and maybe the court can. Um, find room to consider them in deciding whether, you know, whether to impose a, a natural versus a um, so-called regular life sentence. Um, because of the date of the crime and the nature of the jury's verdict and the count that we received on the homicide um, conviction, uh, the court does have the legal option to impose a life sentence. I think um, I, I would have a tough time disagreeing with uh, Miss Miller that it has to be, or, or to suggest that that it would be other than consecutive to the Maribel Gonzalez case. I think it has to be, but. Um, First, let me let me tell you this. I, I've been doing this for, and I want the Salas family to be aware of this as well. I've been practicing for 41 years exclusively in criminal law, and I have pretty much limited my practice to death penalty cases since maybe 1990. And during that time, I have represented more than 30 individuals charged with first degree murder where the government has elected to seek the death penalty. And that was the case here, and that's why I was asked to take the case. Um, and then was asked to continue after the death penalty was withdrawn. I cannot think of a sadder, um, uh, more depressing case than this. What happened to Isabel? And, and I, I'm sure I'm, I'm speaking for the entire defense team. This was hard for us. Um, 
We worked six years on this case. And every time we got together, which was very frequently, um, somebody always mentions this is the worst that they had seen. But that's part of the problem, I think, for Mr. Clements in this case. Um, there was an email provided, I believe, to Miss Miller, who then provided it to the court and and to the defense that actually came from a juror in this case. Uh, it was not a bad email. Um, it was rather, rather kind. But what I found interesting was exactly what Mr. Di Roberto and I were concerned about. The juror mentioned that when he or she saw the bones of Isabel, that they became angry. And the way I read that email, and knowing what they were seeing for the first time, because I at one point saw it for the first time in this case, um, my concern was that there was going to be a verdict based on emotion um, and that it didn't matter who was sitting over there for the defense. Mr. Clements's goose was cooked at that point. We had a lot of litigation um, over the years about um, venue and to this day I, I feel strongly, and this is, you know, an argument to be made at a different level. Um, but I, I felt strongly that it just, because of human nature, um, it was unlikely that Mr. Clements was going to have 12 um, unbiased jurors. When Mr. Di Roberto and I finished our presentation of the case. We, we, you know, we talked about it. What would be right? What would be wrong? We felt that we had done our job, and not only established reasonable doubt, but maybe gone beyond that and actually proven. Um, at some burden that Mr. Clements was not the one who was responsible for this. But when the jury verdict came back, it was nothing other than I expected. He was guilty. I didn't expect a different result. I didn't expect a different result when I was engaged in Lord Dyer at the beginning of the trial. Um, it just didn't feel like it mattered what we did. It's a very unique case. Um, it was also a very circumstantial case. And as I argued to the jury in my closing, in order for the state to stitch together all the circumstances that it really needed to, um, to show that circumstantially, uh, beyond a reasonable doubt, Mr. Clements is responsible for this crime, there were so many real iffy layers to that. So many areas where uh, it could have happened so many different ways. And because of the circumstantial nature of the case, if any one of those layers was not proven beyond a reasonable doubt, 
I, I didn't see how it could go any further. But it did, and I wasn't surprised. But for purposes of sentencing, I, I, I think the court should consider that. Um, sometimes it, it's referred to as reasonable or residual doubt. Um, I think it's present here. Um, additionally, Mr. Um, Mr. Clements is serving two lengthy sentences in Maricopa County and is already serving a natural life sentence with a consecutive kidnapping sentence on the Maribel Gonzalez case. There's case law that suggests that facing that kind of a a series of, of sentencings uh, might be considered uh, a reason to show some mercy at this point and just sentence him to life. Uh, we certainly don't believe that the court can sentence him based on uh, the felony murder rule and uh, 13116 that they could, the court has the legal authority to sentence him to consecutive sentences within these three counts. Because if you take away what needed to be proved in order to prove up the homicide, we're left with nothing else. They had to prove, the state had to prove a kidnapping, they had to prove a burglary. Uh, that was the theory of their case. And in order to be able to prove up the homicide. And under 13116, I think that, that precludes the court from, from running any of these three sentences consecutively. And I may have missed something from Ms. Miller, but I didn't hear her ask, I didn't hear the state ask for consecutive sentences. You did it. Among these three? Am I right, Ms. Miller? Oh, okay. No, Judge, they, they, I agree with Mr. Kessler. They do have to be concurrent within so that's going to give you an opportunity yeah. to be aggressive. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so I, I'm so sorry um, for the Salas family and and the ripple effects through the Salas family. I wish that there was something I could do about that, I, but there isn't. But it's that emotion that I fear is what doomed Mr. Clements, regardless of what the evidence was. And I think if the court takes an objective view um, of, of the evidence and the fact that this was necessary layers of circumstantial evidence, none of which I think reasonable minds could say was proof beyond a reasonable doubt of each level, each layer. Um, there is sufficient doubt here to show leniency and um, sentence Mr. Clements to natural life, or not natural life, to life. I'm sorry. Thank you. Mr. Clements, is there anything you wish to say? There is. that at the nascence of each of the last three trials in which I've been a defendant in in this court, Mr. Martin, you have in baronial locution lectured the jury about the importance of a fair trial being afforded to every citizen of this country. <clears throat> you stress to the jurors that if these rights so enshrined in our Constitution are not adhered to, quote, we are lost, unquote. Using Joseph Stalin's show trials of the Soviet area, you attempted to illustrate trials of the United States' nomenclature as being diametric to the iniquitous nature of those conducted at the behest of the late Russian dictator. Mr. Marner, I'm unsure if you were simply repeating some platitude you gleaned from law school or the History Channel in an effort to embellish the verisimilitude of your court. 
or if you were offering a tacit acknowledgement that the proceedings thereto overseen by your predecessor and from that point to jury deliberation overseen by yourself would be anything but fair. <clears throat> Either way, all three trials that I've endured in your court would have no doubt made any Soviet chairman of the Council of People's Commissars proud. It's inconceivable how any person with even a semblance of pragmatism or objectivity could call what just happened a fair trial. Mr. Martyr, maybe you believe, like countless others, that a trial is fair so long as it takes place in the United States. Or maybe, also like countless others, you don't practice what you preach and instead embrace the ever-growing ideology that the end justifies the means and all else in between is nothing but ceremony. With alacrity, you saw that these trials took place even though the case was saturated with substantive rulings left by a judge, your predecessor, who was found to be biased by the Judicial Conduct Commission. You did not even look at these rulings unless, of course, doing so would benefit the prosecution. You denied a change of venue even in light of the fact that this city's collective media it chose to supplant calumny for veracity and propagate guilt into the community's minds long before these trials ever even commenced. And it was you, Mr. Marner, specious champion of the American citizen's right to a fair trial that actually had the temerity to commiserate with jurors after a hung jury and inform them of my record and previous conviction begotten in your court. You assured those jurors that I would not be getting out of prison your sentiments and bias went from your very mouth to those hung jurors and from them to the media. And the media, our so-called fourth estate, didn't hesitate to put what you said to those jurors into print and television as cannon fodder for the next jury. Your actions helped ensure that the guilty verdict in the next trial was all but certain. The trials and the hearings leading up to them are the best examples of confirmation bias I've ever seen. And I've read a lot of books about village hangings carried out by the Crown in the Middle Ages, Hitler's fascist government, Pol Pot and his ruthless Khmer Rouge regime, and yes, Joseph Stalin's purges and show trials. I still maintain my innocence, even if such innocence has never been presumed by anyone in this court or the community in which it operates, other than my attorneys and maybe a few people too afraid to utter such an outre belief. Though this experience has tested my trust in the American justice system, I still believe in this system constructed by our founding fathers. It's not perfect and those good men knew as much. They knew that injustices and unfairness of courts like King George's and in countries like Spain and France could insidiously make their way onto American soil. It's one of the reasons why we have appeals, Mr. Martin, because of judges like you. Maybe in your next perennial discourse to a jury about what isn't a fair trial, you should contemplate using the trials I endured in you and your predecessor's courtrooms as an exemplar instead of Stalin's slightly fair kangaroo hearings. In closing, I'll quote your words, Mr. Marner, words that eerily mirror those of a German journalist who watched in dismay as men in brown shirts lurked toward the newspaper she worked at in Berlin circa 1934. Quote, we are lost, unquote. Okay. Jeffrey, you give Mr. Mr. Sells. <coughs> Mr. Kessner, anything further from the defense? No, Your Honor. Thank you. not his place, not her place, and it's not my place. 
my job here is to apply the law. And that's what I'm going to do without further comment. All right. Find the defendant guilty of count one, first degree murder, a class one felony in violation of ARS 13 1105, committed on or about April 21 of uh, 2012. Find the defendant guilty of count two, kidnapping a minor under 15, a dangerous crime against children, a class two felony, non dangerous, non repetitive, in violation of ARS section 13 1304, and 13 13 705, 13 3821, committed on or about April 21 of 2012, and defendant guilty of count three, burglary in the second degree, a class three felony, non-dangerous, non-repetitive, in violation of ARS section 13-1507, committed on or about the 21st day of April 2012. Court enters the judgment of guilty saying the court has uh, weighed the information available to it and um, Ms. Miller, while I understand your position regarding comments made that weren't presented to the jury, but were made during the um, interview with the FBI agents, I'm not going to consider them for purposes of sentencing. I'm limiting my consideration strictly to the evidence that was admitted to trial heard by the jury. Uh, that being the case, um, I think everything pales in light of it. Again, not my place to go on. But I think uh, Mr. Miss Clem, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Sells did a fine job. The record's been made. I do find that, <clears throat> as to count one, I do find a natural life is warranted. I'm going to order that uh, Mr. Clemens are sentenced to um, natural life in prison without the possibility of commutation, parole, release, or any other um, relief. Uh, as to count two, kidnapping a <coughs> minor under 15, a dangerous crime against children, I'm going to order the presumptive term of 17 years be served. Uh, and as to count three, burglary in the second degree, I'm going to order the presumptive term of three and a half years to be served concurrently with the natural life, prison, natural life sentence for count one. These sentences shall run consecutively to the natural life sentence and other uh, sentence imposed on counts four and five in this matter. They shall run consecutively to the sentences imposed in Maricopa County under cause numbers CR 2017-005669, CR 2018-009-917. Fines and fees, I will order the um, $500 forensic assessment, $2 victim's rights enforcement assessment, $9 victim's rights assessment, Council, oh yeah, that's right, uh, $500 forensic assess, uh, assessment, $250 sex offender registration fee assessment, $50 address confidentiality program assessment, all other fines and fees are waived. Stating clarification, of course, really. Not of your ruling, Judge. No, Your Honor, thank you. Very well. Mr. Clements, uh, you can challenge what I did by filing a notice of appeal. It must be filed within 20 days of today's date. Anybody need to make any further record on anything? I do, Judge. I would ask... Oh, restitution? I forgot about restitution. I, I don't think that anyone is asking for restitution in this case. So, if you want to leave it open, Judge... I'm going to leave restitution open for a period of one year from today's date. Thank you, Your Honor. During Mr. Kessler's comments, he referenced a um, email that I had received from a juror. Um, I, I don't agree with the comments he made. I think it was exactly to the contrary. So I'm going to ask that that be made part of the record, even if the court wants to put it under seal. Oh, very well. And it was uh, actually, I'm glad you brought that up. I hadn't already filed that under seal. I don't know, Judge. I know that there were a series of things, but just for purposes of the record, I want to make sure that that email is included. Um, I was thinking the exact same thing when, um, when Mr. Kessler was making that comment. What I will do is, um, my J is in here somewhere. Do we have a copy of that email? Yes, sir. Okay. So what I will do is uh, I will file that email under seal. Any objection, Mr. Kessler, Mr. David Burton? No, you're not. Yeah, and I will file it under seal and have it be uh, part of the record, um, and it can be subject to appellate review. Thank you, Judge. And that's a good thought. Thank you. Anything else? No, Your Honor. Anything else? Nothing further. As I said earlier, um, and this is for the lawyers, uh, it's a pleasure working with professionals. So thank you for your camaraderie and uh, 
your assistance, and um, I'm proud of you, both sides. Thank you. Okay, and unless we have anything else, we're adjourned. Thank you all.